Hey guys, Printer Inner Productions here, and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I will be talking about how to use the switch statement as an alternative um, to the extended if else statement. In this tutorial, I will be using Eclipse Indigo in order to demonstrate how this uh, Java application works. This will also work in any other Eclipse or Java IDE, um, so you can go ahead and use whichever one you'd like. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. I've already created this new class called the switch statement class. So what we're going to be doing is demonstrating how to use the switch statement as an alternative to an if else uh, array type thing. So what I'm going to do is since this is just going to be a static class that runs in itself, I'm going to create the public static void main method. Um, and then what I'm going to go ahead and do is demonstrate how or an alternative to the case statement. So let's say we have an integer here called month, um, and it's going to be equal to, actually month is boring, let's just have an integer um, called day, and it's going to be equal to two. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this application display what day it is in string format, um, depending on what the number is. So for example, we would say if day equals zero, um, then we would say, or then we're going to create a string, day string equal to nothing. So if day equals zero, then we're going to say day string equals Sunday. Um, else if day equals one, we're going to say day string equals Monday, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, after a while, this actually gets pretty tedious to do. And um, there's actually a simpler way to deal with this, and it's called the switch statement. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that now. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and delete this if else thing. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what variable can actually change. Like what variable can the user change in order to um, actually change our output here? Um, and the variable that um, the user can actually change is this day variable here. So what we're actually going to do is have the switch statement revolve around that uh, day variable. So what we're going to do is type in this funky little syntax and where we say switch day. And then we open up some curly brackets. So this um, right here is actually called our switch block, where um, we get to deal with all the different instances of what day could actually be. So let's go ahead and start creating some of these instances. So each instance of what day can actually be is known as a case. So what we need to do is create a case block. So we're just going to indent our uh, text in to keep this organized. And we're going to say case 0 and then put a colon. So this is essentially where the variable day is equal to 0. And now we need to specify what we want the program to do. So we're going to say day string equals Sunday. And we're going to go ahead and create these um, things for each uh, each case here. So day string equals Monday. And when it's case two, we're going to say day string equals Tuesday. And when it's case three, we're going to say day string equals Wednesday. Case four, day string equals Thursday. And finally, we're going to say case six, day string equals Saturday. And then what we're going to do is after the switch statement is complete, we're going to say system dot dot print line, and we're just going to print out the day string. So we get in the console whatever number the user actually specified within the program. Now, um, this is actually an incomplete switch statement. So what we have here is we've got, uh, we're switching for the day, and we've got all these multiple cases, and on each multiple case, we specify um, what we want to do. Now, first of all, it's pretty uh, actually weird that we use a colon in programming, um, but this colon is simply the strange syntax for the switch case statement. So what I'm going to do is actually demonstrate this incomplete switch statement. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to specify our day equal to 3. And um, what that should do, uh, since it, the case is 3, it should set day string equal to Wednesday, and then skip down and print out day string. Correct? Correct. Okay, so let's test this out. Oh, 
what what is what is this okay so let's test it out again maybe oh my okay let me um <laughs> let me go ahead and fix this really fast okay so what i went ahead and did is um I just ran the application and I fixed it really fast, sorry. Um, so, as you notice, um, it actually prints out Saturday, which is very odd because we set our integer equal to day three, or which means we should be setting it to Wednesday. However, what happens is, um, since the case is not zero, one, or two, it simply skips these all together. Now, since the case is three, it sets the day string equal to Wednesday. However, it also moves on and completes cases four, five, and six which means the last case it completes is Saturday. So when we leave off, our um, our uh, day string is actually set to Saturday, so it prints us Saturday. Now, that is why this was actually an incomplete switch statement. In order to avoid this behavior, we actually need to exit out of the switch statement after every case. And this can be done with the break command. So each case um, can actually have as many lines as you really want. Um, but the most common syntax is to have a one line thing and then a break statement. So for each case, we're just going to insert a break statement. Now we're going to indent in two lines just to keep everything organized. So once again, all this break statement does is it exits the switch statement um, and jumps directly to the next line, which is system.out.print. So now if we run this application, uh, you see that it prints out the correct day, Wednesday, because it skips case 0, 1, and 2, does case 3, prints out Wednesday, and then exits the switch statement to print out the day string. Um, so that is very interesting behavior with the switch case statement. Now, you can also do other things within the case, um, such as declaring um, advanced type of statements. So, like, if we want to create a whole if statement here, uh, we could actually do that. So we're going to have another integer, or a boolean, actually. No, no, no. We're going to have a string called Wednesday substitute. So, <laughs> what substitute? Okay. So, say for the user, Wednesday is kind of hard to spell because it doesn't really... It's not really spelled like it sounds. So we will actually want to create a substitute called Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, which is a string uh, with how Wednesday actually sounds. And we wanted to display this every time um, the Wednesday actually occurs. So we're going to say, in this case 3, which is Wednesday, we're going to say, if Wednesday substitute substitute is not equal to null, so if the user actually set a value for the substitute, then we're going to say day string is equal to witness day substitute. So the user is essentially substituting a, um, a new name for Wednesday. However, if um, Wednesday substitute is not equal to null, we're going to say day string equals witness day, the proper spelling. And then we're just going to go ahead and break break. So once again, I'm just going to take care of that indentation. And um, we actually have misspells here, wedness day substitute, wedness day substitute, oh, I keep putting the D in there, substitute. Um, so there we go. So now we actually have an if statement inside of our case in which we substitute Wednesday if the user specifies. So we're just going to go ahead and run this application once again. And as you can see, it prints out Wednesday because we have a um, a string specified. However, if we just put a colon here and press run, um, oh wait, if we just set this equal to null um, because we don't actually have a substitute for Wednesday, it prints out the correct witness day. All right, so um, that is a uh, demonstration of how you can actually use uh, the switch statement with uh, integers. However, the switch statement can also be used uh, with bytes, shorts, chars, or characters, um, and any sort of enumerated type. It also works with the string class and um, wrapper classes, such as character, byte, short, and integer.
Um, so what we're going to actually do is we're going to demonstrate how you can use uh, this the uh, string switch statement. So let's just say we're going to do it backwards. The user is actually going to submit a um, a day in text, and we're going to return the number that uh, actually corresponds with that day. So we're just going to go ahead and get rid of all of this information that we have here. So the first thing we're going to need is an, a day integer, and we're also going to need a string day, uh, day string. So the day string, we're just going to have the user insert Tuesday. And we need to get the number corresponding to Tuesday. And then when we're done, we're just going to want to print line of day. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to want to switch uh, switch with the variable day string. So day string can be anything that the user specifies. And now we actually need to okay. Um, so one uh, one little caveat with this is this uh, switching with string statements was not actually inputted to Java uh, until version 1.7. So with your common version of Eclipse, you're actually going to want to have to change your project compliance and JRE to uh, actually version 1.7. So it supports this functionality. So Eclipse should do that automatically for us. And, um, and apparently it doesn't. So I don't know what that was all about. OK, give me one second while I solve this problem. Okay, I apologize for that. Um, what I actually needed to do is set up my Eclipse so it actually supported uh, Java 7, uh, or the JRE version 7, because that is when the switch statement with strings was actually added into Java. So just like with WinIntegers, we can actually set up the switch statement in order to support strings. So we can say case, and then we need to specify what the string is. So if the user types in Monday, um, then we want to do day equal to one. Well, actually, let's start with Sunday. And this is going to be all in lowercase because there's no up, uppercase. Um, and then, just like um, before, we're going to insert that break statement, and now we're going to say case Monday, and then we're going to say day equals one, and insert the break statement, case, case, Tuesday, uh, day equals two, break, case, Wednesday, day equals three, break. So as you can see, when um, you're dealing with strings, the, the uh, syntax actually does look really funky especially since we have all these misaligned break statements. Case Friday. Day is 5. And then we're going to say break. And last but not least, case is Saturday. And we're going to say day equals 6. And uh, break. OK, so now if we actually type in a string of a day, we can um, we can get the actual uh, integer of the day. So let's go ahead and test out this application. And as you can see, we typed in Tuesday, which means we get the day is two, which is good because that means everything works as uh, as it should. So you can definitely use uh, switch statements with strings. Now, one of the more interesting actually functionalities of the switch statement is the case default. So we can actually simply type instead of case, we can type default and then a colon. And this will occur if none of the other cases actually occur. So, um, so say the user inserts a day that doesn't exist. Um, we're just going to say day equals zero, and break out of that. Although it is the default case, we still need a break statement. So let's just say I insert a day made up named um, Flabber Day or Fallber Day, and I don't know where that came from. And then we actually press the run here. Um, what it's going to do is skip all of these case statements and go right to the default statement where day equals zero. And then it's going to break out and actually print out the day. So there you have it. That is how to use the switch statement in order to um, keep or as an alternate 
alternative rather to if else statements in order to keep your program looking pretty organized and um, because it's Java it doesn't really matter where you put any of this so we can actually organize this in such a way uh, that it looks a lot better So as you can see, now we've got cases set up, and um, their bodies are right below it, and that actually looks really organized. Um, so once again, when comparing anything with a switch statement, uh, all you have to do is specify in these parentheses the thing that you want to compare, and um, then you can do these. Um, now, one thing that I actually forgot to show you is that you can have multiple cases attached to each result. So let's just say what we want to do is combine weekends. So both Sunday and Saturday will return a day of zero. So, or actually, they'll return a day of, let's just say, 10, because they're the best, they're the weekends. And we don't want to create a whole separate case statement here um, just for Saturday if it's going to do the same thing. So what we can actually do is um, we can actually just type case um, Saturday right here and just put a colon and then on both cases, Saturday and Sunday, um, this body will actually occur. So we can go ahead and test that out by pressing the Run button. And, oh wait, we still have Fall Brew Day inserted. So we're going to type in Sunday and press the Run button. And as you can see, it prints out 10. And if we do Saturday and press the Run button, it prints out 10. So you can have an infinite amount of cases executing on the same body which is really great because um, sometimes you need to do the same thing for different results. So thanks for watching this tutorial on how to use the switch statement in Java. Um, I'm sorry for that little mishap with Java 7, but um, it was really easy to solve. So um, thanks for watching, and please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will uh, talk to you guys later. Peace.